Uh, I'd like to call this meeting, this public meeting to order. Uh, before we go any further, I've asked Mr. Bully to open up with a prayer. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, um, today I pray to the, the Almighty, uh, the Creator, to give us guidance as we do important work for the people of the territory, uh, looking over some legislation that makes um, life a little bit easier for the people. I pray that we're also able to do this with the respect and dignity appropriate of our positions. Amen. So I'd like to, again, welcome everybody to the Standing Committee of Social Development. Before we move, move forward, I'd we'll ask uh, our uh, members to introduce themselves. On my left there, Mr. Bolio. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm Tom Bolio, uh, MLA for Tuneda Willity. Kieran Tester, member for Cam Lake. Michael Nadley, MLA for Dutchel. Uh, Kevin O'Reilly, Frame Lake. RJ Simpson, MLA Hay River North. Good afternoon, Shane Thompson. I'm the chair of the Standing Committee of Social Development and also the member for Nahendi. On my left uh, is our law clerk, Ms. Holland, uh, our policy analyst, uh, Ms. Walsh, and our clerk of the committee clerk is Mr. Ball. Uh, at this time today, the Standing Committee of Social Development is holding a public clause by clause review of Bill 5, an act to amend the summary procedures, Conviction Act, Bill 5, proposes to amend the Summary Convictions Procedures Act to provide that the Act does not apply to the contravention of the Municipal Parking Bylaw for which an administrative monetary penalty has been established and was referred to the Committee on February 22nd, 2018. Copies of the reveal are available at the back of the room. At this point in time, I'll ask Minister Siebert to introduce yourself or your staff for the record and proceed with opening comments you may have. Following the minister's opening or remarks, committee members may have comments or pose questions on the bill. Minister Siebert, please proceed. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I'm pleased to be here today to discuss Bill 5, an act to amend the Summary Conviction Procedures Act. With me uh, here today are Roger Shepard, uh, Legal Counsel Prosecutions, and Mike Reddy, Director of Legislative uh, Legislation Division and Stephen Dunmore, my uh, Ministerial Special Advisor. This bill is a result of extensive discussions between the City of Yellowknife and the Department of Justice regarding the issuance and enforcement of parking tickets. The Summary Conviction Procedures Act was last amended in 2010 to create efficiencies by allowing for a conviction to be entered if the accused does not show up for their court appearance. The City of Yellowknife has since that time indicated interest in taking on responsibility for the development and implementation of its own parking offense regime. Bill 5 addresses this re request and provides an amendment whereby the Summary Conviction Procedures Act does not apply to parking offenses if a municipality has developed an administrative penalty regime of its own. The amendment will give municipalities in the Northwest Territories the option to draft bylaws and establish their own administrative scheme for parking tickets if and when they wish to. The status quo will be maintained for those municipalities that do not choose to establish their own regime. The amendment is expected to significantly reduce demand for parking ticket matters on justice of the Peace Court and the related provision of sheriff services. This in turn will provide greater access to justice by allowing justice of the Peace Court time to be used for other non-parking related matters. Mr. Chairman, I would be pleased to answer any questions that the committee may have regarding Bill 5. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> Thank you, Minister Siebert. Any comments, questions in regards to this bill? Mr. O'Reilly. Uh, thanks, Mr. Chair. So um, maybe the minister can just provide a little bit of detail about what kind of uh, regime is expected of a, a local government uh, in terms of uh, using this, uh, uh, I guess what might be termed an exemption. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Wright. Minister Siebert. This will be up to the uh, municipality, uh, of course, and I was thinking about it uh, this morning. It perhaps could be a system somewhat uh, similar to other administrative uh, systems 
perhaps even, I don't know if this is an exact uh, analogy, but uh, you know when you get your assessment notices uh, in the mail, there's a, uh, a system which you can challenge the, the amount. So the, the point here is to save court time and have a more efficient system. But it's up to the uh, municipality, whether it's Yellowknife or another municipality, to develop the system that they feel is most appropriate. Thank you. Thank you, <coughs> Mr. Siebert. Any other comments, questions? Mr. O'Reilly. Uh, thanks, Mr. Chair. Yeah, the, the last thing I want to do is slow this bill down. <laughs> uh, well, this is uh, something that the city of Yellowknife was asking for when I was on city council from 1997 to 2006. So. Uh, uh, this is uh, a long, long time coming, but the the wording uh, of the the one clause bill um, it just uh, says that uh, um, that this doesn't apply uh, once a municipal council has established an administrative monetary penalty. Period. It doesn't say anything about a regime. So um, is that just maybe a, a an oversight or? Um, because you can you can establish a, a, an administrative monetary penalty under bylaw a, a bylaw, but you may not necessarily have a, uh, a regime behind it. So, may, can I get someone to comment on whether that might be clarified? Thanks, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Minister Siebert. Um, good question. Perhaps I could uh, defer the question to Mr. Shepard. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Shepard. Thank you, sir. Um, Yes, well, the, the language certainly, uh, as you've, you've stated, does only uh, speak about an administrative monetary penalty for the contravention uh, of the bylaw. The fact of the matter is when, when dealing with an administrative monetary penalty system, there wouldn't necessarily have to be a regime behind that system. If not, um, we would likely see challenges, judicial reviews of, of the fact of the matter that there is no scheme for review and it's very likely that uh, if there was no regime behind the administrative monetary penalty that there could be uh, successful challenges before the Supreme Court of the Northwest Territories with respect to that. Thank you, thank Mr. You, sir. Thank you, Mr. Shepard. Mr. Ray. Thanks. Um, I get that, but just maybe for greater clarity, would it be better to insert the word regime after penalty? I'm trying to get away from making any substantive changes, do, you know, because then do you have to define the word regime in the, the act itself? Hopefully you wouldn't, but um, maybe that's something we can just leave with these folks to, to think about because the way it reads now, if a penalty is established, that might be good enough and that um, might not be uh, the best way to craft this in a way that... Uh, could lead to court challenges and so on. And I'm sure everybody wants to try to avoid that. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Early. Minister Siebert. Yes, I think we could uh, probably take a, a look at that. Uh, it's, a, it's a good point. Um, as Mr. Shepard uh, has mentioned, that the, I think there would have to be, because there are some economic penalties uh, involved here, there would have to be some system to uh, appear in front of uh, somebody. It doesn't have to be a court, which is the whole point of this. But uh, we will look at that. Thank you. Thank you. Minister Siebert. Any other questions, comments? Mr. Tester. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And uh, I, too, am pleased to see this bill move forward. It's, it's uh, taken a long time to, to see any kind of uh, change. As a former deputy sheriff, I spent many, many hours in traffic court, and, uh, and it was exhausting at times. So I'm sure my, uh, my former colleagues will appreciate this, as well as the city of Yellowknife. Uh, my question is, uh, uh, this is a relatively short bill. How long did it take to uh, to dr to come to bring this bill forward? I'm, I'm just wondering, when a bill is, you know, a sim relatively simple amendment, how much time are we looking at from, um, you know, the the policy development stage to actually introduction in the house? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tester, Minister Sieber. Well, um, I know there was a, a good deal of back and forth from the, uh, the city of, uh, of Yellowknife, so there were those types of consultations. And I suppose what uh, uh, can happen is that uh, other um, perhaps more important uh, matters take precedence. But, uh, and I do realize, as um, MLA O'Reilly has uh, stated, that this has been a concern from the, uh, 
the city of Yellowknife. So it, it took too long. It should have been done uh, done before, but it uh, looks as though we uh, now are uh, moving ahead with it, which is, is appropriate. I, I don't, it's hard for me to, to estimate the actual amount of time that this, uh, this took. Uh, I do see correspondence from the um, city of Yellowknife from uh, uh, last year, but I do realize that they had been interested in this uh, change in legislation for uh, some time. Thank you. Mr. Siebert. Mr. Tester. Uh, the, the thank you to the minister for that and uh, the acknowledgement that this has taken quite a bit of time. Um, I just know that in many cases, members have identified relatively minor amendments to legislation and it seems like they are, it does take a bit of time. So I was just looking for insight on how quickly a relatively simple bill takes to, to come forward. Um, but nothing further, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tester. Do you wish to comment on the comment, Mr. Siebert? Uh, no, I, uh, the, the point is, uh, is, is well taken. I know there was consultation, there was a correspondence with the uh, judiciary and uh, so on. So it went through the normal steps. Perhaps it did take a little longer than it should have. Thank you. Thank you, Minister Siebert. Any other comments, questions for Minister Siebert? Seeing none. If there's no further comments or questions for the Minister, does the committee agree to proceed to a clause-by-clause -clause review of Bill 5 and act to amend the summary proof? Procedure Convictions Act. Committee? Agreed. Agreed. Thank you. The committee agreed to conduct a clause by clause review of Bill 5. Let's turn to page one of the bill. There are two clauses in, in the bill. Committee, we will defer the bill number and the title under the consideration of the clauses. So, so clause one? Agreed. Agreed? Thank you. Clause two? Agreed. Thank you. We will now return to bill number and the title, Bill 5, an act to amend the Summary Procedures Convictions Act. Does committee agree? Does the committee agree that Bill 5, an act to amend the Summary Procedures Convictions Act, is now ready for consideration in the Committee of the Whole? Agreed. Mr. Simpson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I move the Bill 5, an act to amend the Summary Procedures Conviction Act, be reported to the Assembly as ready for consideration and Committee of the Whole. Motion is in order. To the motion. Question. Question has been called. All those in favor? All those opposed? Motion is carried. Bill 5, an act to amend the Summary Procedures Conviction Act as amended and reprinted will be reported to the Assembly as ready for consideration and Committee of the Whole. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mr. Minister, thank you for your officials. Uh, we are in the public and we are now urgent.